welcome back to the professor. Yes, I am the professor that teaches photography and Photoshop. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, restoring an old photo's color. Um, I've had some people in the comments mention that they're having a hard time restoring color or sort of the chemically um, feel of this of photos. And I've got a really simple, quick way of doing that. Um, it all starts with sort of a histogram. We're going to go over that a little bit. Um, but this shouldn't be a very long lesson. Um, it should be very quick, short, and to the point. And I hope it works for you guys. And if not, let me know and I'll come up with another way. This is the way I would do it. So this is an image. This is a four by six image that I scanned in at 600 DPI. When you're scanning photos in, I always suggest using the highest, um, the highest uh, dots per inch or resolution you can on your scanner. Um, there's a selection and a place to select this on there. Um, I would do that just because when you go to print, I think it's nicer to have a better um, a better scan with more information than it is to have a scan that probably wouldn't print really well, right? If you're printing images that don't have a very um, that aren't very uh, beefy and don't have a lot of um, information, you're fighting two battles. One, you're fighting the fact that the image is probably sort of cruddy to begin with, with like noise and like discoloration, and it's sort of soft probably uh, because the analog cameras. Um, they shot it with probably it was maybe a little bit out of focus or something. So you're already dealing with a not very sharp image that has some noise and some discoloration. Now you're adding the fact that you it doesn't even have a whole loads of information when you scan it. It's just uh, yeah, you're losing two battles right there. So what I would normally do is I would scan it as the highest at the highest level you possibly can. Here I did 600 DPI, and this is about how big the image is. Um, well, let's see. This is that would be full screen, and that way you can see faces. Um, you can see how sharp it is and how how good it looks. Um, I would do that. I'm no, I'm not sure. I have no idea why I have this weird expression on my face, or why my mom photographed it while I had that expression on my face. Um, yeah, I'm not even sure why she printed this. But um, uh, yeah, let's get let's get to let's get to work on this though, right? This is when I was about ten. Uh, it would be like early 80s. So that this image would be, this print would probably be 80. So let's say 80s, 90s, 2000s, 10, 20, 40 years old, 40 minutes, eight, roughly 40 years old. Gosh, I don't know. About 40 years old, I think. Um, so let's, let's fix this color. You'll notice it's very, very magenta, right? There's like lots of magenta in it and you don't really, these blues, and these whites don't really look white. His hair doesn't look really blonde, and he is, and his face is really super pale in real life, and it's not very pale in this, like it's got some red in it. So we need to fix that. So what I would do is this. You can do the exact same thing with curves or layers. Just choose whatever one you're uh, most comfortable with. I also hope that other software platforms like Affinity, photo and other sort of ones that you can get that some of the consumers are using that aren't using Photoshop, that you guys can utilize this also. And I hope you have a levels and I hope you have a curves that you can do this with, okay? So let's check it out. Let's go to my curves down here in my adjustments. I'm gonna go to curves right here, right? And then I'm gonna bring up this, this adjustment layer right here and this mask. Um, so up in here, you'll see it's an RGB, uh, uh, it's RGB information, which is red, green, and blue. That's the, that's the, those are the three colors channels that we're going to be working with. And you'll notice this standard one here, uh, or this, this, uh, this graph here is, this is your histogram. Okay. What does a histogram tell us? It tells us how much RGB red, green, and blue we have in the image. And then it tells us where those values lie. So the red, green, and blue, do we have red in the in the blacks and the dark grays? Do we have green in the highlights and the whites? Do we have blue there? This graph I'm going to show you tells you all this all this information. Okay, so if we look down here down here at the bottom left, this is pure black, otherwise known as numerically zero. Okay, here is pure black right here at the left. Over here on the white, where this little slider is, that's pure white. So we have pure black and we have pure white. Dead center here is usually 18% gray, okay? So if we look at dead center, most of my information, you guys, is not black, it's not white, 
it's not even close to black. It stops here at sort of a dark gray and it stops here at sort of a light, light gray. But I don't ever get to a true white highlight or a true black. It's all my information's dead center, which is why this, this image looks sort of muddy. It doesn't have a whole lot of contrast. It looks almost like it's sort of one tone and it sort of is. Okay, so there's where our information is. It's mostly gray in this area. How much, do, how much of it do we have? Well, dude, it goes all the way up here in the gray. So we have a load of information here. Right about here, we have almost the full freaking gamut of information of this gray right here, we have loads. And then it sort of falls off of how much we have of other things, okay? So let's go to the red channel. We're gonna break the red, green, and blue channel apart and separate it into red, green, and blue. Here's our red channel. Oh my gosh, so in the reds, you'll notice reds hardly go into the darks at all. They stay in the mid-tones and mid-gray, and they stay up into the highlights, but not really truly up in the white-white, right? Up in the, like, the pure white. What we need to do is we need to take this histogram in this of the red, we need to make sure that this little, the, the end of it stretches over to here, and that this end for the highlights stretches to here. That way, there's red into the shadows and red into the highlights because it's missing here. So let's drag this over. And let's drag this over to where it hits. Okay, there we go. We've now made it so that the end of the black and the end of the white, it's, in, it's fully in our red information of the, our reds. Let's go to green, the green channel. We'll do the same thing. We'll pull the green over to where it's hitting. We're gonna pull the white over to where it begins over here. And then we're gonna do the same thing with our blue channel. And you can see it already looks better than what it did before. Boom. And boom. And that looks pretty good. That looks pretty authentic, right? Love it. This color looks way better than that color already. Now there's one thing that I would probably change you guys and do before I finished and did all this and, and finished it. And it's, I have seen a lot of color noise in here, okay? Yeah, there's like lots of color noise. Let's see if I can, wait, I may have already taken it out. Did I take that out? There's noise here. It's just not, not as much. I actually denoised it already. So let me show you guys what I did. Um, and I did this. Let's take that down. And in the original image, I went like this. Actually, you know what? Here. There's the final image, right? This is what it looks like. This is what it would look like. Okay. And what I'm going to show you is how I would denoise it real quick and take the noise out. So let me just can this real quick and not save it. And I'll bring it back in and show you I'll show you guys how I would do a noise reduction on it. So let's not save this. That's the image, right? Let's bring this back. Where's my stuff? It's like right here. Yeah, I know. I scanned the whole flipping thing. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, let me, let me crop this. Not right there. So I don't know why it's doing that. I hate when it does that crop tool like that. And it starts there instead of at the bottom. Let me fight my crop tool. Freaking love that. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is this. There. Okay, so there's my shot. Now look, what I was talking about at the beginning that I'd already fixed on the other one was this kind of noise, which I hate. It's like green, there's like green and red and stuff in here, okay? To fix that, you can go to filter up here and go to camera raw filter. And in this filter right now, I'm gonna make it like 800% so you guys can see it. In this filter, there's like red and green pixels everywhere, okay? Let me make it so you guys can really see it. Okay, so now look, if I take the color noise reduction over here, and again, this is in, this, in these little um, uh, adjustments under camera raw, you'll see the detail one, click detail, and then take the color noise slider and take it and slide it. Look, see the difference? There's that and there's that. Color noise, green splotches, none. 
Green splotches, none. Okay, we want none. Next thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna take down the other noise a little bit, which is sort of these, these um, this sort of grainy feel. I'm gonna take that down just a hair, where it's a little more smooth like that. And I'm gonna sharpen the image a little bit so I get my detail back. And this I like. Okay, so this is where I'm going. It's something like that, right? That to me looks way better than it did before. And now I can just go through now, guys, and do my adjustment. And since I did curves last time, I'll do levels this time. Same exact type of thing where you come up to the red channel, you bring your blacks over till it looks weird, right? Bring your whites over. You're probably at this point going, you gotta be kidding me, this looks nothing like it's supposed to look. But as we get going in it um, and do it, it'll look better and better, right? And there we go. There's our same almost exact color, right? And that to me looks better. And we can print that. It'll Yeah, it'll print a little bit grainy. Um, and what I would go through and fix some of these specs and things guys in it. But I think after that, I think this actually image will come out pretty, pretty well. I'd probably darken some of these areas down here, dodging and burning. But other than that, I think we're, I think we're good. I might actually take off and I'll leave that on there. I, it looks like my sister had like red, like impetigo or something, or like chicken pox on her face. We're leaving that on there. I would never take that off. Just like I would never fix my face. So yeah, this is how I would do color correction, you guys. If you have any other types of color correction you want me to address, let me know um, in the comments. I've got um, I've got a 1940s, 30s and 40s photo I'm gonna do um, next time. And we're gonna work with that one to show you how, it, how to correct a little older film emulsions and see how that works. Uh, but for now, um, keep shooting, keep playing and keep editing. Um, it's exciting to see where the world of photography and Photoshop and editing is going. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. So stay creative and uh, yeah, keep producing and I'll see you guys next time.